Okay. Good evening, dear women. <laughs> it's like a production. <laughs> Good evening, dear women. Righteous women. First, let's say, Bezrat Hashem, Shadiyah Mashiach, Tzikhen Bimra Bi'aneinu, Amen. Shadiyah Nabasar Eliyahu, Nabi Eliyahu, Bishbi Eliyahu, Glid Baram, and Nashem Ben-David Eliyahu, Nabi Zachur Latov. Amen. I would like to tell you, this week's portion of the week is Parashat Be'yechi. You can go to Torah anytime that come. I gave you a few lectures about Parashat Be'yechi. Over there you can find a lot of lectures that I gave you in, in the past about Parashat Be'yechi. I was asked a question before, again by Madeline. So <laughs> I would like to tell you that by the Zohar Kadosh, uh, she asked me about Parashat Be'yigash, about Yehuda and Yosef, that they are standing in front of each other and there's a conflict between both of them. And I would like to tell you by the Zohar Kadosh, all the, all the discussion between Yehuda and Yosef is the discussion between Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David exactly about our times, the times of Mashiach. Everything that they discuss is about the times of Mashiach, which are our times. We are the generation of Mashiach. Well, so, did they, did they, they talk about the, I mean, Yosef and uh, the, themselves? Yes, but the, the interpretation that the Zohar Kadosh gives is about the Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach. It's about two Mashiachim that are speaking to each other about the end of the week. I would, like, I would like to tell you, dear women, this parasha, parasha Tebeichi, God told Yaakov Avinu, God told Yaakov Avinu the end of days, exactly the date of the end of days. You know, there were only two people in the world that knew the date. One of them was Yaakov Avinu, and the other one was Daniel the prophet. Two. And Daniel the prophet writes it in his book, and you know, I, I touched the, the, the book of Daniel, the prophet, I touched it already. And when I gave you a lecture about the five exiles, I touched the book. But there's a lot to touch in that book. <laughs> so if we'll have time, Blineder, I will give you another lecture about the prophet Daniel and about the end of days in the, that is mentioned in the book of the prophet Daniel because it's, it's divided to two parts. One of them is everything that happened to him when he was in Babylon, in Iraq. And the other part, the other part from Perek Zayn, from chapter seven, uh, seven and until the end of the book, which is uh, chapter 12, all of this is about his pr uh, prophecy, Daniel's prophecy about the end of days. So, and also the date of the end of days, it's inside the book of Daniel. So only two people, the Midrash says, knew about it. It was Yaakov, it was Yaakov Avinu and Daniel the prophet. And I would like to tell you, please, go to TorahAnytime.com and you can look at the at Bezat Hashem Parashat, the portion of the week of Vayechi, so you can have Bar Torah around the table that is connected also to the portion of the week. But meanwhile, I would like to go back to Tomer Dvorah. And I think Bezat Hashem, today will be the last day, I hope, of the introduction before we start the book, Bezat Tova. And if you remember, we spoke about Parashat Ekev. And when we spoke about Parashat Egev, I gave you sentences, verses from the parasha, from the portion, and it was all about what does it mean to walk in His ways, in Hashem's ways. And we came to the conclusion that it's like a pyramid, that we have to have Yirat Shamayim, Yira, which means the fear of God, and then we have, we have Ahava, the love of God, and then we have the Dvekut, Dvekut, which means the attachment to Hashem, and the end of the pyramid, you know, I didn't do a good pyramid, okay, and here at the top is Tselem Elohim, that we want, to, we want to reach, the goal is to reach Tselem Elohim, which means the goal is to have the image of God, that each one of us will become the image of God, and how can we become the image of God? We said that we have, I showed you by the, by the sentences, by the verses inside Parashat Ekev, that everything, in order to have Yerat Shamayim, we have to walk in His way. Lalechet Bidrachav. In order to have Yerat Shamayim, in order to have the fear of God, and in order to elevate yourself from the fear of God to the love of God, again you have to have Yerat Shamayim to walk in His ways, and in order to elevate yourself from the love of God to the attachment of God, you also have to go to walk in His ways. And then after the attachment, in order to have the image of God, you have to walk in His ways. 
And we spoke about it, what is Yirat Shamaim and what is Ava, which means what is the love of God and the fear of God, because a person cannot love God without having the fear of God. Because if he does not know God, and he's not, he's not afraid, it means that there's no coin, there's no um, totot, there's no results to a person's actions. He's not afraid, he can do whatever he wants, he can harm the other people, he can steal, he can murder, because he feels that nobody, nobody will judge him for that. Call Dalim Gada, when you don't have the fear of God. So the fear of God uh, uh, replicated in, in the commandments. Yirah, we get the fear of God from Lot HaSeh. Shasa, 365 commandments of Lot HaSeh that you are forbidden to do. All the mitzvot, all the commandments that are lota say, which means you are forbidden, forbidden to do, come brings you to yirat shamaim. You are not allowed to steal. You are not allowed to to murder. You are not allowed to be a, a false witness. Everything that you are not allowed gives you the fear of God. Because you're afraid of God, you won't do that. This is part of the commandments. But the love of God is the commandments that you should do. I say, Ramach, which means 248 commandments that you should do. This is the love of Hashem. This get, we gain from it the love of Hashem. Which means when we need to keep Shabbat, we gain the love of Hashem because inside our heart we feel happiness. We can feel it spread inside our body because our neshama that received the neshama yatara, the other half that is under the throne of Hashem, feels happy. We can feel the love of God. So in, when we do kindness to people, when we give charity, you feel happy. You're even more happier than the person who receives the charity. This means that you are... You are causing yourself to be awakened to the love of Hashem. And when you do that, and when you fulfill the mitzvot of Lotasa, which means you go uh, by the mitzvot of, that you are not allowed, you are forbidden to do, you, you receive the fear of Hashem. Now, I, I wanted to give you a chidush in order to complete this. I, you remember I told you? So I was sitting and thinking, so tell me, what's the difference between the fear of Hashem and the love of Hashem? Before we go to the Torah, before we go over there, before we ask the question, because you remember I told you, okay, so usually people think that in order to follow in Hashem's ways is to do His commandments. Everybody says that in order to follow in Hashem's ways is to do His commandments. And I told you, remember, that it's not enough. Rashi says, it's not enough. You have to have kindness. It's more than following in His ways. You have to have kindness towards other people. Yes. Other people, animals, everything that Hashem created. Because God says, well, okay, you come to the shul, you daven, you do what I want you to do. <coughs> but, he says, I do not know if you truly love me. Because it's in your heart, it's inside the body. What we see only is the flesh outside and our actions. But what happens inside? What is our intention? So God says, okay, how do I know that you love, truly love me if you love my children? If you love my children, you love me. Because, you know, like in a family, when you have a friend that, that dislikes one of your children, it's obvious that he cannot also love you because this is one of your children. You, you understand that? It's also in, a small, in small portions, in a micro phase, which means that God says, love my children, be kind to them like I am kind to you, then I know that you love me. So this is to love Hashem. But then the difference between Yir'ah and Ava, look how beautiful it is. We go to the Vida Melech, we go to the Psalms in Tehillim. We just read the book of Tehillim. And it says over there in Psalm 145, Kuf Mem Hey, it says like this, Retzon Yir'ah Yaseh, Be'et Shabbatah Mishma V'yoshem. So look what King David says. He says, the will of his fearful, the ones that fear him, you see Yir'ah over here. The will of the ones that fear Hashem, I am going to do. If they will shout to me, will cry to me, I will listen and I will rescue them. Pay attention, this is Virat Shemayim. But then, a sentence after that, it says, Shomer Hashem et kolo abav. We're speaking about the ones who love Hashem. So God says, I'm keeping and I'm protecting all of my lovers, all of the ones that loves me. 
that kol arashayim yashmir, and all of the wicked ones I am going to destroy. Which means God, look at the difference of the sentences. If we only fear Hashem, then God helps, help us. If he, says, he says it over here. If we only fear Him, God will help us from the people that, the, that causes us, uh, causes us the, uh, danger. But if we love Him, He will destroy them. He will yashmid, totally destroy them. Over here, when we only fear Him, He will take them away from us, but they won't be destroyed totally. But over here, with the love of God, they will be destroyed totally. Look, and you know what's, beaut what's the beauty of it? Look. This is Mamasha Chidush. The sentence starts with all of the lovers of Hashem. The sentence starts with Shin. And it, it ends, if uh, it was with a Dalet. So please join the two letters, Shin, Dalet. What do you get? Shed. Shed is a demon. So now look how beautiful it is. This is the Chidush. And this is from Hashem. This is Mamash from Hashem. When we say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, it starts Shema with a Shin and ends Echad with a Dalet. Yeah. It's almost Shed. You see? Yeah. Another Shed. Kriyat Shema is another Shed. Just pay attention. Look, and this is about the sentence of the people who love Hashem, which is a higher, it's elevated from fearing Hashem. Fearing is the basic thing to have the fear of Hashem. But when we elevate ourselves to the love of Hashem, we are in a higher degree, spiritual higher degree. So look, it's a Shed, another demon. That's why it said that he who reads, say, says Kriyat Shema on bed, when he sits down, it's like he holds a, um, a sword with two edges in his hand. <coughs> why does he hold a sword with two edges? You know why? Because he kills all of the demons. Kriyat Shema, look, Kriyat Shema is against kina, jealousy, and sina, and hatred. You see over here? Kriyat Shema, Kufshin, when you write it in short, Kriyat Shema is against jealousy and hatred. Why do you say that when you go to sleep? You know that all of the bad things that you had in, during the day will go away from you. That you can take them away from you and your children and your house, everything. You, you just want to, you don't want to be connected. But it's more than that. But I, I forgot to tell you something, so I'm, I'll, I'll pause for a minute because I have to remind you. This Thursday is Ta'anit is Ta'anit Yud Tevet, the tenth of Tevet, and you remember the tenth of Tevet is when the, when Nebuchadnezzar took his army and he had a siege around Jerusalem, and after that on the seventeenth of Tammuz the walls were broken and on Tisha B'Av they went in and burned the temple. So I would like to remind you. The fast starts in the morning from 5.37 a.m. and ends at 5.18 p.m. That's the fast of you. This Thursday is the 10th of Teved. It's a fast. It's only Ta'anit. It's not a 24 hours fast. Okay? So it starts at 5.37 p.m. and ends at 5.18 p.m. A.m. Sorry. It starts at 5.37 a.m. and ends at 5.18 p.m. <coughs> So everybody has it. Don't forget, this is this week on Thursday, dear women. Okay. I need the space. Okay. So, look, dear women. And I will show you what kind of... What number can you name all of them? This is Kufman Hay, 145. And the shed, the first shed is which... I will explain in a minute. I'll give you an explanation. You'll see it's beautiful no, because... The first one, the first shed. The first shed, this comes from Shomer Hashem et kol ava, et kol arshayim yashmid. Oh. Shein ve'adal. Okay, Ashin, shein, nigmar bedalet. So we're saying Shema, we're saying Shema, Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, right? Gam po yesh lanu Shein ve'dalet. Okay. So how is it connected to one How is it connected? We also have Shein ve'dalet. Now look, what I, I'll give you something from the Gemara. I didn't bring it with me, I just... Masachat Minchot. It's written over there like this. Amar Reish Lakish. I would like to tell you, you know who was Reish Lakish? He was a big person, but I have... I, I think I told you once over here, but I'll tell you again. Reish Lakish. I just want to show you that even a criminal can become a high scholar in Torah. He just needs to, to change himself and to recognize Hashem. Reish Lakish was a robber. He was a thief. And he was very strong. He was big. He was strong. And the, and the Gemara says that Reish Lakish one day came to the river of Jordan. 
And Rabbi Yochanan was deep in his body in the river of Jordan. We are mitrachet, we are And he was in the river and Resh Lakish wanted to rob him. So he wanted to show him how strong he is. So he jumped from one side of the river to the other side of the river. Of, uh, who, uh, you were in Israel, did you see the river of Jordan? Yeah. It's not a shoot it's it's to jump in from one side. He was very strong. When Rabbi Yochanan saw this, he said, Torah, which means all of your power should go to the Torah. Once he said that, he became so weak, Reish Lakish. He couldn't understand. <laughs> he became so weak. And from there on, he started to study Torah, and he became a big scholar in Torah. And he's written in the, and he's written in the Gvara and in the Mishnah. It's beautiful. This is Reish Lakish. So let's see what Reish Lakish says. So it says in, 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 in Minchot, in the Gemara in Minchot, it says over there on page 110, Amar Resh Lakish, which means Resh Lakish said, about the sentence that is in, in Vayikra, in Chumash Vayikra, and it's written, Zot HaTorah Lola Lemincha Lechatat Veleasham. It's written like this, Zot HaTorah, HaTorah Lola Lemincha, write it exactly, Shamilu Lemincha. So that's what he says. Look at the sentence. He says, this is the Torah for those are sacrifices that we give when we do something wrong and we go to the temple and we give those sacrifices on the altar in order that God will forgive us. So, four kinds of sacrifices that we, that we give in the temple in order that God will forgive us for our sins. So dear women, he continues, כל העוסק בתורה כאילו הקריב מנחה חטאת באשם, עולה מנחה חטאת באשם. And then he says, which means he who learns and studies the Torah, it's like he already sacrificed those four sacrifices. And he continues and says, and he says, אמר רבה, כל העוסק בתורה, which means רבה adds, he says, he who, who studies the Torah, he says, אינו צריך לא עולה, לא חטאת ולא מנחה ולא אשם. So he says, Rabbah says, he who studies the Torah, it's the same thing. He does not need any of them because by studying the Torah, like Resh, Resh Laki says, we already gave sacrifices. What are those sacrifices? Look how beautiful it is. Ola, we have over here Ayn, we have Mincha, and we have Chet Shel Chet, and we have Lamed Shel Asham. You see Ayn, Mem, Chet, Velamed. Now look, when we say Shema Yisroel, over here, we, we have Mem, Ayn, Aleph, Vechet. Mem is from, look over here, Mem is from Incha, you see it? Ayn is for Ola, you see the Ola? Aleph is for Asham, you see the Asham? And Chet is for Chatat. You see the four sacrifices in Shema Yisroel when you say that? You say that, and why do you say that? Because there, there are four... Uh, Mem זה כנגד מנחה, קורבן מנחה, עין כנגד קורבן עולה, א' כנגד קורבן אשם, וח' כנגד קורבן חטאת. ממש, את עושה, when you say שמע ישראל, it's like you are sacrificing four of them. אז במילה האחרונה התכוונת להקיף את האלף, לא את ה... אה, כן, סליחה, את האלף, כן. תודה. הנה, אני ארשום את זה עוד הפעם, שאני אקיף את האלף, ולאשם. Look how beautiful it is. And against what are the four, those four uh, korbanot? Any shma, any shma. When you say and you, you, and you concentrate, you are taking what kind of shell, what kind of impurity, what kind of demons, because I told you shma Israel is to take off the demons that you take away from you. Look how beautiful it is. It's af, chema, Avon v'mashchit. There are four demons, okay, that you take off when you do each one of the sacrifices. You see, mashchit starts with a mem. Shelo neda metzorot. Ma? Okay, you can write it in the Limud. At Roshem et Bezrat Hashem Siyat Adishmei Alemala. Avon, you see there are four shells that you take off of yourself when you do that. When you do that, those are, it's, it's a ketuv klipot tum'ah, which means those are the shells. It's hard to, to translate klipah as a shell, but it's, it is a shell. 
It's a shell of impurity. And when you say Shema Yisrael, you just get rid of all those four of shells of impurity, which means Mashchit, Avon, Af, Vecheima. You remember when Moshe Rabbeinu, the, the Magifah started, there was a plague between the children of Israel when they did not listen to Hashem. So they all, four of them were awakened. And Moshe Rabbeinu had to take them off. And he asked Aaron also to help him because they started killing the children, God forbid, the children of Israel. So when you say Shema Israel, you can see, Aleph for Af, we have Asham, we give the Korban of Asham. Chema, Chet, we give over here the Korban of Chatat. We have Mashchi, the Mem, we give over the Korban of Mincha. And then Avon, we give the Korban of Ola. And we, we say Shema Israel. We say we already take them off, all four of them. And they are very dangerous, the four of them. We do that. So when God said, when David, King David says over here, Shomer Hashem et kol ha'avav ve'et kol ha'rshayim yashmit, he means those demons that we also say them in Shema Yisrael. Look how beautiful it is. It's in the secrets of the Torah. So if we love Hashem, God takes all of those demons from us. And how does he take them from us? Because when we love Hashem, then all of our sins that cause all of the creation of the bad angels that are on our left side, all of those sins, are, because I have to tell you something, you remember that Hashem does not do anything bad to anyone. Kadosh Baruch Hu loves a men Everything that He does is about love and truth. So what, what happens? Why do we have suffering? Why do we have problems in our lives? Why do we have difficulties? Because the angels that we created, we created the angels, the bad angels by our, by our sins, because of the bad angels that we created, they are the ones that cause us suffering. When we have the fear of Hashem, God causes them not to do anything to us. Because then, I, you remember I told you that then all of our sins become a zero in the bank of Hashem. But when God, when we love Hashem, all of our sins become positive. It becomes like in the bank, you have plus of money inside your bank. Which means that all of those bad angels become good angels. They cannot harm you. So God destroys us in a positive way. Those demons go, because, instead of being bad, bad angels, they become good angels. And we do, sorry, and we do that by loving Hashem. So this is the difference between Yirat Shamayim Ba'avat Hashem. I hope everybody understood it to, to the depths of it. But only by saying Shema Yisroel, we are taking bad demons off of us. Just by Ken. As Asham, Tistaklipo, Asham Zeleaf, Vechema Zelechatat. Af. Zecharon Af. Names of bad angels. Asham Vechatat. זה ממש חט, יש לך כאן חימה זה לחטאת, חטאת זה כנגד חימה, כי זה חט, את רואה חט, חטאת, כנגד חימה. וא' של האף זה כנגד אשם. את רואה את זה? טוב, ברוך השם. So dear women, this is the difference between יראת שמיים ואהבת השם. But now we will go to the next stage. The next stage, can I wipe the board? If you need an, another explanation, ask me. I will explain it again. You're welcome. <laughs> but I, wanted, I wanted you to see the beautiful of the, Mamash, I think it's, it's part of the secrets of the Torah. And I want you to, to see it. So it is, even if we're surrounded by all these negative voices, as long as we say this, and as long as we attach ourselves to Hashem, we're not affected. No, no, the Torah protects you. The Torah is like a shield. The Torah is like a shield around you. So it protects you from all sides. Nobody can touch you. But it depends on your emunah and your faith in Hashem. Is that the Shema Yisrael of the morning? We say the Shema Yisrael But Shema Yisrael, you have to say it with intention, with kavana. You have to concentrate. It's the same. You take everything bad from you because you have just like chaven. That's when you go to sleep. Uh, that's when, yes. 
כן, ואז יישר כוח, זה על פי ההלכה, על פי ההלכה. כן, this is by ההלכה. את לא, את לא מכוונת, פה את מכוונת, זה חידוש, פה את מכוונת, dear women, when you, do you think about the four קורבנות, four sacrifices, it's in order to take off all the bad, you don't think about the bad things, you think about the sacrifices, but dear women, by הלכה, this is written also in your סידור, when you say שמע ישראל, it's written in your סידור, that when you say אחד, you have לכוון, you have, especially on the דלת. On the on the over there you have to lechaven mamash. Why? Because you have to think about arba mitah bedin. The four the four ways that the dead bedin, which means the court, the Jewish court, will kill you. Skila sreifa herek bechenet. One by throwing stones of skila, then sreifa is by fire, and then herek killing by sword. Bechenet is by suffocating, choking. So those are why. When you concentrate on this, it's it's keilu. It's like you you are the, you cause yourself to die, and then all of the sins that you did, and because of them you should die. The punishment is death for them. It's like you did it. You understand? It's like you received the punishment. But again, I will I will repeat what she said. Aleph, when you say echad, Aleph is alufos shel olam. Aleph is twenty six in numerical value. So it's against Hashem that is one in His world, the one and only one. Chet is about the seven rekim, and so the seven parts of heaven, and the one. Chet. Chet is numerical value is eight, but it, it it includes the seven parts of heaven and one the one that you add is earth. Kadur Aretz is earth. Okay, and Dalit. Slicha. Yeah. Okay. And Dalit, like I told you, you have to concentrate up about four four mitzvot bedin. Skila sreifa herek bechenek. Zeh four mitzvot bedin. Okay, that's what. I'm sorry. Somebody said that you have to make sure that you say Dalit, not Resh, because. Yeah, I told you about this. You remember, you're not allowed. Why the Dalit is big when you say Shema Yisrael? Dalit is big. So you won't be, get mistaken with Reish. Because if God forbid, if you have instead of Echad, instead of the Dalet, I'll write it over here. Ken. If instead of Echad, instead of the Dalet, and the Dalet is written like this, there's the Chupchik of the Dalet. And the evil inclination does not want us to pay attention to the Chupchik of the Dalet. And God forbid, it's a Reish. It becomes Acher Chas V'Shalom. Acher, which means a different God. You understand? Yeah. That's why you are not allowed to mix between Reish and Dalet. And the difference between Reish and Dalet is only the Chupchik. Over here, Kotsa Shel Dalet. This is the Chupchik of the Dalet. You see the difference. So that's... Sheva Rekim Ba'aretz. But it's written also in the Sidurim. It's Halakha, so it's written in the Sidurim. You can open the Sidurim. Even the ones who have translated in English, you can see it over there. It tells you exactly how to concentrate with the Chad. In Sidurim also, Shema Ayn is also elevated, so you have to visualize this too. Yes, Ed, 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 like a witness, Ed. Okay. Because Simcha mentioned it, I will, I will mention it again. You have the Shema Yisrael, the end of Shema is Ayn. And the end of Echad is Dalet. Together it's Ed. Ed is a witness. So Ed is a witness. Shema ends, the word Shema ends with the letter Ein. And the word Echad ends with the letter Dalet. Together it's Ed. But this is things that, are, that is written in the Sidurim. You have it in the Sidurim. So this is a witness, which means you're also witness to the holiness of Hashem. You are part of it. And we were all witnesses to Kabbalat Torah, which means the receiving of Torah on Mahmad al-Sinai. We were all witnesses. Us and all of the future generations and the past generations, we were all witnesses. Now, dear women, let's go back to Talmud Torah. Sorry, I missed the Dalet. Dalet? What do you mean you missed the Dalet? Arba mitot bedin, which means the four ways of killing a person by the Jewish court. 
אוקיי? Can I continue? I can wipe the board? מה? כן, נכון, but these are part of the secrets of the Torah. אני חושבת, את יכולה להגיד לי בקיצור על מה דיברת ששמח את הדבר הלא משפט שלך? עוד לא דיברתי, עוד לא הגעתי לזה, לא, אני רק משלימה קודם את היראה והאהבה, I'm just completing the... כן. No, because it means that he does not fear Hashem. You understand? When you love Hashem and you do whatever you want, you're not, you do not fear Hashem. Because if you would have understood that everything that you do has uh, consequences. עכשיו רימתי, כן. נזכרתי במילה consequences. Has consequences. You understand? Then you will have the fear of Hashem. You'll understand that everything that you're going to do, you're going to be judged. Everything that we do, we are judged for. Everything, even the small, even the thoughts that we have. Hashem judges us for the thoughts. You understand? Even if we did it, the kind of, our intention was not good, God knows that. That's, you know, that's the ridiculous thing that I, I always say. Even if, we, even if we are religious, okay, we have external, it's called external tirat shamayim, tirat shamayim chitzonit. This is external, the fear of God. When we dress up modestly, it's only external fear of God. But we need the external fear of God so we can be modest. But then what's important is the inner fear of God, exact, the, the internal fear of God, God. Because when we have internal fear of God, We will not make anyone embarrassed. We will not cause We will not cause a person to be embarrassed in front of a crowd. We will not hurt someone. And even if someone hurts us, we won't shout at him back and behave badly because we'll understand that everything that happens to us, it's from Hashem. Hashem is testing us. You know, I was asked on Shulchan Shabbat for a beautiful question. We have Rav Arya Gamliel. Rav Arya Gamliel Shalita, he used to be in the Knesset, Chaver Knesset, so he is a, he's a guest in our house. And he asked on, on Shulchat Shabbat, he said, tell me, why did King David become one of the four wheels of the Merkava, of, of the courage of Hashem? Okay, a Merkava. Rafach liot regel radish of Merkava. He's the fourth wheel of the Merkava. The three wheels is Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and David. Why isn't Moshe Rabbeinu, Yosef? Why is it the other righteous people? It's David the Melech, King David. And I have to tell you something. And, and I, what I answered is, because King David knew the essence of Hashem. He had the fear and the love of Hashem and the attachment to Hashem like no one had. Because think, David suffered so much. King David had so much suffering in the world that you cannot even imagine. He was a king. God made him a king. He sent Shmuel and Nabi Shmuel the prophet to make him a king. And pay attention. And the people knew about it. And still they went against, against the Vidamelech, against him. And they tried to kill him. And most of his life he was in hiding. He had to hide. Even once he had to pretend that he is crazy in order to save himself. Yeah. He had to pretend that he was crazy in order to be saved. And then people cursed him, like Shimi ben Gera, Klalot nimratso, Kala nimretzet u kilel oto. And nimretzet means nun avur noef, which means that you, 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 ha, you made adultery, and then after nun yashreish rotzeach, that you're a killer, and then the mem is moavi, which means you're from Moab, you're from the people of Moab, you're not Jewish. <laughs> כן, כן, זה עוד האחים שלו, אני נגיע לזה עוד שנייה, יישר כוח. So they were... Yes, and his son tried to kill him, he took all of his wife, all of his wives, and he slept with them. Just think about it. And he killed one of his sons, את אמנון, אבשלום הרב את אמנון, one of the sons of King David. And then you remember when King David, I gave you lessons about King David. You remember the story, the story about King David? that his father, Yishai, he wanted the maid, and the maid came to his mother and told her, listen, I don't want any sin in your family. 
So I, I told him that I will meet him, but you should go instead of me. And they, King David's mother went, and she was intimate with her husband. <coughs> but he, he was short. He, when he, he was born, he was small, and he was red-headed. And all of his brothers thought that he's mamzer, yeah. that he's out of marriage. You know, that his mother was with another person, and he's not truly there. <laughs> so he, <laughs> Dear women, so think about and and his father sent him to be a shepherd with a sheep. And when Shmuel and the prophet, when Shmuel the prophet came in order to 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 to, to take one of the king, of the children of the Ishai to make them to make him a king, he looked at the firstborn and he thought, "This is a king," he, because he saw him. He was tall. He was handsome. You know, he had a, 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 an appearance that caused you to honor him. And God said, no. He says, God tells him, no. A person sees to the eye, but God sees to the heart. And after all the sons come in front of Shmuel and Navi, he asks him, do you have another son? Because those are not the ones that are going to be kings. He said, well, I have someone, a shepherd. So they call him. They call the shepherd. <laughs> Yes, so they called him, they didn't even think. And then the oil from the hands of the, uh, Shuel the prophet jumped on him. And the oil itself, it was a miracle, it was spiritual. Everybody saw that. So dear women, look how many times King David, the whole, all these 70 years that he lived, he suffered so much, if you'll read about him, you'll see the suffering beneath it. I don't know if every, any one of the sages suffered like King David. And still, when he was cursed, he said about Shim'i ben Gerai when he was cursed, and, and his uh, Tsuya, Tsuya ben Abishai wanted to kill him, his general, King David's general wanted to kill him. He said, no, don't kill him. God told him to curse me. Dear women, yeah. if somebody behaves not nicely, to, badly towards you, or curses you, or shouts at you, do you tell it to yourself? Well, God told her to curse me or to shout at me. I should receive it with love and not do anything. Yeah. Uh, tell me, <laughs> read you. Do we do that? Do we do that? Do we do that? <laughs> Mashiach will be here. Because this is working on your message, understanding that every time, everything that happens to us is from Hashem. It's not from us. Everything that happens to us is from Hashem. We, we, everything, every small detail is Ashkacha Pratik. Maybe it's a shame looking at us. Nothing, but I know what we're talking about. You should, it says, you know, it says that you should forgive her because otherwise there's a reconnection. You'll have to meet her because she will have, you understand, in order to save yourself, you should forgive her. You have to close the account. You have to close, exactly, to close the account. I have the metro. I don't believe it. It's not a account. Yes, but to forgive. Why? Because otherwise, culture is not. Dear women, God bless you. Next week. Next week. Good to see you. Um, excuse me. Take the book with you. We are studying the book with you. Even if you see that on the net, you can study it with us. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, dear women, so you understand the essence because King David understood that everything that happens to him is from Hashem. Everything. So he was all, you know, think he went to a cave, he saw Shaul, King Shaul, and he could have killed him. And he did not kill him. And he was allowed to kill him because he wanted a camel of Gichash, camel of God, this is halacha. Which means a person who wants to kill you, you should kill him first because this is by halakha, by the Jewish law. You cannot see a person coming to kill you and you will stand and not do anything. You understand? And he did not kill him because he understood that everything is from Hashem. He, was, he had the fear of Hashem, the love of Hashem, and the attachment to Hashem. Because the, the, uh, Satan could not take his soul because all the time he was saying Torah, he was speaking Torah, everything that you said, he was studying Torah. Only on Shabbat, 
when the, the, when the, when the Satan saw that he, the bad angel, the angel of death, saw that he cannot take him, and already King David knew that on Shabbat he is going to die, to pass away. So it says that the angel of death moved in the garden, the trees, and because of that King David went outside, but he did not stop saying Torah, studying Torah, and reciting it. But then one of the stairs, the step, steps, one of the steps broke, and when it broke, he, he fell with it, and he stopped saying the Torah, and then he could have t taken him. Only then he could t take him. So, except me, Valpel, if uh, uh, when somebody comes to kill you, you have to uh, kill back first, see this is the halacha. Right. And then how, how come, um, when somebody is harming you, you have to just accept that. It's not killing you. It's not coming in with a knife to kill you. You won't stand like this. It's different. Oh, then it's a kill, spiritual killing and a physical killing. Better. It's so not the same the, thing. The better. By physical I mean, killing, killing. by uh, uh, literally by physical. killing, physically yes. taking a soul and coming towards you. But it's not going to hurt you very much. Yes, but you should understand that yeah. God sent him to hurt you. Yeah. Why? Because he made a sin. Yeah, yeah, and this is your repentance. So the Allah is only about. Okay. That's different, healing. something different. So first you have to accept it, it by love. The first stage is to accept it by love. You have to accept it. God sent this person to you to hurt you by you know by by telling you bad things or speaking to you badly. To hurt you, it means first of all God sent him because I have something to repent for. But then of course there's no coincidence. The end because of the Valky. You remember that I told you there's no Mikre? Mikre in Hebrew coincidence is Rak me Hashem. Rak me Hashem. Everything is me Hashem. There's no coincidence. Everything is me Hashem. Everything. Or Rakam Hashem. Everything is a plot. Rakam Hashem. The same, you see, it's the same letters. It's God plotted to do something. And it means that you have a fixing with this person. Which, which means. In a good you need two people to fight to have a quarrel to fight you need two people a person cannot fight with himself because when he fights with himself he is in a closed uh, you know in a mental place when a person stands and, all, and fights with himself a person cannot fight with himself if you agree to go into the fight this is a different thing but if you do not answer this is a shut up song if you, have, you come to this situation and you did not answer, you did not answer, I want you to know that this is a time of will. This is Shatrat Son. There's a, a tube of prosperity from this world to heaven that is open for you. And every wish that you want comes true. So just to ask him the same. But you, the Shatrat Son. Mamash, the Shatrat Son. Lebakesh, if Mishra Bakielo Tachakalai, Belanitlo. Okay, if you not answer and you stop talking with that person, then what? So, I, I always say, it's better to say, that's it, leave it to Hashem. Thank you. Amen. Leave it to Hashem. Yes. He, he knows how to deal with these things. You leave it to Hashem. You have to... Do, you don't understand this uh, contact between human beings. Why did we come to this world? Why did we have a reincarnation? Because we came to fix. But what kind of sins? It's not sins between us and Hashem. Because over those sins, God forgives us on Yom Kippurim and also in hell. In hell, the sins that we, don't, we did not do His commandments, we are forgiven over there. It's because we hurt other people. Dear women, we came... And we meet each other because we have a fixing. It's not a coincidence that we meet each other. Each and every one of us, we already met each other. You understand? We already met each other in a different, in a different time. And when we meet each other, it's in order to fix ourselves between sins that we have between one human being to another human being. So you don't want to come and visit again like this. You want to stay in heaven. You want to be in paradise. We all want to have a place in paradise. The whole, 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 the whole,
זה הכל תיקונים. יש שני אנשים, אחד אני פתאום מסתכלת ואני אוהבת אותו, והשני, אני לא רוצה אפילו לראות אותו. אז מה אני באתי לתקן? את האהבה או את השנאה? קודם כל, אהבה זה טוב. It's a good question. לפעמים אי אפשר, ואנחנו... It's a good question, dear women. את לא באת רק לקבל מכות, יש גם סוכרות על הדרך. It's a good question. I will explain, I will repeat a question. She says, sometimes you meet people and you feel, you, you feel like a, a feeling of love towards them. And sometimes you meet a person. No, no, a different one. And you feel like you have, you know, uh, like the two magnets that have the, have the same pole and you're rejected from him. You do not like this person. Dear women, because we have a circle of energy around us, you understand? And not always this circle of energy can be, it's like chemistry. You have to put the same things, the same materials, a polar material with a polar <laughs> solvent, it, and then it mixes. So it's the same thing, but then we should work on ourselves. Because the essence of Hashem is love and not hatred. The, uh, the whole essence of Hashem. When we make Tomer Dvorah says, Rabbi Moshe Kordobero says, Hey, it's, it's working. Exactly. That's why you came to this world. You can't, we, it's okay, it's okay. In a few minutes, they are speaking about the same subject and explain what is Dear women, we, we are studying Tomer Dvora in order that we can... We are studying Tomer Dvora in order that we will have the, uh, the tools to that. The tools, and it's not the same as the money money. In order that we have the tools in order to fix ourselves. And what do we need to fix, dear women? Our measures. And it's not easy. No. The only thing that we came over here is to fix our measures. With what tools? What are the means of fixing our measures? Is the fear of God, the love of God, and the attachment by walking. Lalechet bidrachav. Lalechet bidrachav. By walking. Bidrachav. By walking in His way. We came to fix ourselves. All of this is, you know, the building blocks of becoming a human being. You understand? This is becoming a human being. A true human being that has the image of God in him. Because, you know, it says in Tomar Borah, the first thing in Tomar Borah that says, Mi el kamocha. Who is a God like you? And I will give you just a small essence of what does it mean, Mi el kamocha. It means that God... Here, listen. Listen very carefully. It means, who is a God like you? It means that God, look, think about how merciful He is. When we wake up in the morning, He brings the Neshama back because you know that when we sleep, it's one sixtieth of death. That's why we need to do Netilat Yadayim, to take this bad spirit from us. And it's very important. Otherwise, when we bake or do things for our husband and our children, it's with that spirit, that spirit. It's mixed with the food and everything, and then we eat it, and it's in our blood, in our bloodstream. So that's why it's very important to do Netilat Adayim in the morning. So dear women, think about it. God brings the, his, the, his essence back into us, his soul into us, and what do we do? We wake up, and then God forbid we speak on the phone, and we, sp so we slander someone, because you know what, usually when you speak on the phone, if you want it or if you don't want it, it goes to, sometimes to a bad direction. We speak about Plonit Bakloni, this woman, that man, this... If, even if we don't want to, it causes us. That's why I always tell women, don't speak on the phone. Only the things that you have to speak on the phone. Why? Because it causes the Shonara. It does cause the Shonara. When we meet friends, Stamal Havelda, we do not speak about Torah or holy things that we studied, you will see the conversation may go to the bad, to the, to the left side which means Lashonara, slandering, things that we do not want to do that. Dear women, that's why it's very important to be silent, to, to study how to be silent. It's very hard. You know? <laughs> 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 
When you listen, when you're in a group of women, one, one friend of mine, she asked that uh, sometimes uh, comes bad thought, not verbally, but mentally, and she's Sadek at Rebetzin, she said sometimes it comes to her uh, bad thoughts about Ploni, different Jew. And she knows that it's a Yitzhara. She doesn't want to hate him, but for some reason, bad thoughts come towards that Jew. And she doesn't know how to stop that. I'll tell you. What's the answer? I, I told you, do you remember? Say First Shabbat of all, to, exactly. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat. Shabbat. Say the word Shabbat. Yeah. The word Shabbat takes off bad, bad thoughts. Oh, the word Shabbat has the, the word itself. Shabbat Shema, the word itself, by the Gemara, takes away bad thoughts. You think bad things, say the word Shabbat. Shabbat, 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 Shabbat. Concentrate. Sorry? Even if it's the middle, Le'arer B'Shabbat. להביא לך את המילה הזאת, שבת שבת, המחשבות הרעות ילכו משם. Just to think about things. And if you have bad thoughts, another one from חומש ויקרא. Dear women, from חומש ויקרא, you should say this sentence. אש תמיד. אש תמיד תוקד על המספח. אוקיי, the fire that was always burned on the altar will be there. אש תמיד תוקד על המזבח. זה בשביל להוציא בעד תות. Say it, repeat it, כן. Repeat it again and again, אש תמיד תוקד על המזבח, לא תכבה. כן, אש תמיד תוקד על המזבח, לא... מתי להגיד את זה? תכבה. When you have bad thoughts, אש תמיד תוקד על המזבח, לא תכבה. When you have bad thoughts, to take it, the easiest one is to think about שבת. שבת, 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 is very easy. which means the fire that was always burned on the altar will not ex extinguish this is from Chumash Vaikra Okay, this is a good sentence to remember it. It takes all bad thoughts away. Or oh, either Shabbat, huh? And there's another thing from Pitom Aktoret. You want to have it? Rachash Memulach. Pitom Aktoret. If you already asked, it means that I need to give you just a minute. Rachash Memulach. Okay, dear women, I will give it to you. From Pitom Aktoret, Memulach, Dear women, you see the Reish, the ending words of this sentence, Memulach Taor Kodesh, this is from Pitom Aktoret. From Pitom Aktoret, Memulach Taor Kodesh. You have to concentrate on the word Rachash. The end letters of this sentence. The end letters of each one of the words in this sentence. And it's Rachash. If you concentrate on it, it takes bad thoughts away. Okay, dear women, this also takes bad thoughts. It's from Pitom Aktoret. ממולח טהור קודש? למה הפוך? זה פשוט, זה האותיות, הסוף, פשוט אני לא שמה את זה, זה המילה, המילה עצמה, רכש, שהיא מגיעה מפה, מהמשפט הזה, this word that comes from here, ריש חט שין, if you just think about it, it takes also away bad thoughts. בעזרת השם, that will have always just good thoughts. אמן. אוקיי? אש תמיד תוקד על המזבח לא תכבץ, זה ספון ויקרא, ממולח טהור קודש, ספון פתאום הקטורת. רחש. תשיא חט, רייש ושין איז רחש. אוקיי? The last letters of the three words. כן, לא, אבל המילה שצריכה להתרכז בה לפי הסדר הזה. No, you have to think about it. 
and you will see bad thoughts go away. Memulata. If you don't remember the, it's not to remember Memulata or Kodesh. Think about the Memulata or Kodesh, Memulata or Kodesh until, sorry? Memulach Tahor Kodesh, it's part of the Pitom Aktorit, which is Memulach is salted, Tahor is pure, Kodesh is holy, okay? And salt takes all the suffering and everything. So, Shadbarim, remember, if you don't remember, Eshtamid Tukadar Mizbech Lo Tichbeh, remember Shabbat. Remember Shabbat, Shabbat is easy. Shabbat, 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 Shabbat. And then you have Memulach Tahor Kodesh from Pitom Aktorit, Bezrat Hashem, this also takes bad thoughts. When you have it, just say that and you will see because this is the power of the Hebrew alphabet, the power of letters. Do you understand? Can you repeat the meaning of the Tahor Kodesh? Yes, the Tahor Kodesh is the Tahor Kodesh. It's just random three words. It's not random, it's a part of the Tahor Kodesh. The Tahor Kodesh is the Tahor Kodesh. Listen very carefully, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Leah. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says, if the children of Israel would have known the merit that we have in Saint Pitom Aktore, they would make tarim, they would make crowns to each letter in the words in Pitom Aktore. Pitom Aktore is a big secret. It's a big secret from the Torah. This is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's Chutot Aganelenu that wrote, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the Zohar Kadosh is by his name. So he said if, a, if the Jewish people would have known the merit of reading Pitom Aktoret, so I'm giving, this is part of Pitom Aktoret. This is to take, Bli Neder, Kodem Nigmor Lai, Tomer Dvorah, 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 Lai, Tomer You remember the first time that you came to the shiurim, to the lessons? Look, Baruch Hashem. Look, Baruch Hashem. We elevated. God helped us to elevate ourselves to a higher spiritual place. These are all building, building blocks to understand. You will see when we study Tomer Dvorah to the depths of it, you will see how much it will help you all of the introduction to Munachim. How do you say Munachim in English? מונחים, 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 מה? קאם, אז לא רק קאם, פרייזס, כן, גם פרייזס. אז תחזרי רגע, אם היו יודעים כמה חשובה פתאום הכתוב, מה היו עושים? היו כותרים כתרים לכל אות בתוך פתאום הכתוב. עד כדי כך. עד כדי כך. Do you understand how much it's important פתאום הכתוב? So dear women, I can see that I'm not going to start today with תלמוד תורה כנגד כולם. גם מחקתי את הפירמידה. But I would like... אבל את הדבקות. I will give you something, I will give you something, I will give you something, this is what the, the completion of the fear of God and the love of God, the attachment I told you, the best example of attachment to Hashem, except for David Amelech, is also Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was, shh, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was attached, shh, listen, it's important, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was attached to Hashem in such a way, him and all of his friends, all of the scholars with, that were together, were attached to Hashem in such a way that all of the generation that they lived in did not see a rainbow. There was no rainbow in his generation. And why? Because you remember that I told you that when God gives the rainbow, shh, it means that we were supposed to have a flood. It means that we sinned. And what we, did we sin with? Which means with jealousy, lust, and honor that takes a person out of this world. Why? Because Keshet stands for Kuf Kina, Kina jealousy, Shin Zesina, which means honor, Kavod, and then Taf is lust, Tava. As God gives us a hint, when you see a keshet, He gives us a hint. Dear people, uh, you deserve to have a flood, God forbid, because you already sinned with jealousy, hatred, and lust. But I do not do that because I promise not to do that. Do you understand? This is a hint that we will do tshuva, we will repent. But the problem is that people do not understand this. 
If they would understand the secrets of the Torah, if they would understand the secrets of the Torah, they would not be Not a lot of people know, understand the meaning when they see it. God is communicating with us, with everything that is around us. And he loves us, so he warns us. He says, pay attention, you have to re repent. You have to, sh you have to have sh <coughs> unconditional love. You know, it says Bayoma, Bagmara Bayoma. I have I will finish with this. He was amazing. He said something about a Masechet, I think it was Masechet Yoma. Masechet Yoma, listen because then you lost. And I, Masechet Yoma, is, is, it's written over there. Shetova Tsipornan Shel Rishonim Mikersan Shel Achronim. Which means that the Tsipornan, um, the nails. Of the first, the first ones is better than the belly of the last ones. It's very weird, yeah. What a kind of sentence. <laughs> Which means the the nails, okay? All the you know all this um, all the hand of the first ones is better than the belly of the last ones. So listen, the Gaot the Mevina gives such a good interpretation, Shkutot HaGelenu, Smashu. I will explain it now. Listen very carefully. He says, what is Rishonim? Rishonim is a generation that was before the ruining of the first temple. What is Achronim, the last ones, is the generation before the ruining of the second temple. So now he says, look, we go back to Hamash Ve'ikra. Chamash Veikra B'Shminim, in the portion of Shmini, we see over there, we have kosher animals and we have non-kosher animals. But God, which is the creator of the world, he says there are four animals, because he says, if you will find one sign of kosher, which means, he also mafris parsa. If, if the food goes up in the animal, down and it goes and it can, and from his stomach, and he chews it again, but it comes from the stomach again up, it means that you will find that also he has a split in his uh, legs. But if you don't find, you won't find anything. But then he says there are four animals that, that they have only one side. In all of the animals over the world, there's no, there's no scientist that can tell you and sign you that he knows all of the animals <coughs> over the world, and this is true only for these four animals. But Hashem can because he created the whole world. This is how we know that it, it, this is the creator, it has to be. In yesh bira, yesh manhig labira. So it says over there that the camel, the shafan bet arnevet, and the pig, which means shafan is a rabbit, arnevet is also a kind of rabbit. I don't know how to translate. Hair. It's called a hair. Eh? Hair. Hair. Okay, so we have the camel, the uh, rabbit, and the hare, and we have the pig, four of them. Gamal, arnevet, shafan, the chazir. So he says, Gamal, Arnevet, Shafan, the Chazir. They say Gamal is not our soul. No, it's not kosher. It's not kosher. It's not kosher. Dear women, listen, it's very. Dear women, listen very carefully. So what do we see in a camel, in a rabbit, and in a hare? All three of them, they chew again the food. It goes down and it goes back from the stomach up and they chew it again. But they do not have a split. Okay? They do not have a split. But the pig has a split. But, but the pig has a split, but he does not chew his food again. So the word is Mafris Parsa, and not Male Gera. Gamal, Arnevet, and Shafan, Malim Gera, and not Mafrisim Parsa, which means they have only one sign of kosher. Okay? Those three have the sign of kosher that they Male Gera, that they take up the food and chew it again. And the pig has only that he has split in his legs, but he does not chew his food again. So, dear women, the Gera says about it a beautiful thing. He says, okay, look at the Rishonim, the first ones, before the ruining of the first temple, the generation before the ruining of the first temple. 
So he says, it's better their it's a tzipornaim shalem mikersan shal acherim. Why does what does he mean that it's better that they are fingernails? Because he said that those the first ones, the, the generation in in that era, in that in the first temple, they sing to Hashem by worshiping other gods. So because of that. They came to a uh, murder because they sacrificed their children, and they came all also to Gilu uh, Yarayot, which means uh, you know, intimate and uh, forbidden uh, intimate re relationships. But this was caused because of worshiping another god. But they did love each other. They did not slander each other. They loved each other, and all of their sins were outside. Everybody knew. They did not pretend that they're righteous. They didn't have, you know, external fear of God, but internal everything is wrong. You understand? Everything was outside. So, so it says, Yafatsiporna, because it was outside, it, everybody saw their sins. God helped them after 70 years of exile, they came back to the land of Israel. 70 years of exile, they came back to the land of Israel. That's why they knew that their end was known. But before the winning of the second temple, they were all righteous. Do you understand? They were all tzaddikim. They all knew Torah. They were all uh, modest before the winning of the second temple. But the inside was rotten. They hated each other. They slandered each other. But in the external uh, point of view, they were righteous. You did not see the rotten things inside because they did not work on their measures. They did not fix the measures because they felt we are righteous. A person who feels that he's a tzaddik, he's righteous, he doesn't have anything to repent for. He does, he does not need to do tshuva because he's righteous. A person who thinks about himself that he's a tzaddik is not a tzaddik. I want you to understand. A person, it means that he has pride. This is pride because a person, even Moshe Rabbeinu, which was the modest person yeah. in all the world, he didn't think that he was a tzaddik. He asked Hashem, but not chinam. Give me from the place that you have a free gift. Because I don't know if I have enough, enough merit that you will help me. Even Moshe Rabbeinu asked from this place because he doesn't even know. Yaakov Avinu. Katonti mikol chasadim. Yaakov Avinu says, I am so small. I don't know even if all my merit can help me if I have any merit. If there's something left because you helped me so many times. So look how righteous, they didn't think they were tzaddikim, but a person who thinks it means he has this characteristic of pride. The, otherwise he won't say about himself that he's tzaddik because everybody knows if you're true with yourself, during the day you atamoed, you do things that God does not like because you're a human being. And King Solomon says about, about it, en tzaddik there's no righteous person that will live in this world without making a sin. There's no, nothing like this because we're human beings. And God knows that. So it says it's better that those, the first one, the first generation, that all of the sins were outside because then you can fix them. Then you have, they can, when you show them the right way, you can fix it. Why did, did the generation of Ahab, he was working, he was one of the kings of Israel, when the kingdom was separated to Judea and Israel, he was one of the kings of Israel and his wife was Izebel. And it says that he worshipped idols. And why all the time when he went to war, they won? They won when they went to war. And why did they win? Because they loved each other. They did not slander each other. They had unity. And God says when people have unity and they love each other, then you can teach them that show them that they're not that, that they're not in the right path, they will repent. Why? Because they have respect toward each other. But when people do not respect each other, they will think, who is this person to tell me what to do? Who does he think himself? I'm righteous. So why should I listen to this person? Well, this is Babal Shuba. Why should I listen to him? Who is he? Mm -hmm. This is Gaba, this is pride. This is a person that does not have anything. All of his Torah already went away. Why? Because all of the people that he spoke about, all of his mitzvot went to them. And you know what? When you, when you come to the true world, then you will see that you'll say, wow, I did a lot of mitzvot. And where are they? Yeah. And you see boxes and angels, bad angels come. 
and they will show you that all of your mitzvot went to different people. And all the people that you heard by thinking that you are above them, that you have any as a Iluish and Mitzana, all of those people, they came to a better place than you are. Because those are sins between one human being to another. We came to repent over those and to fix those, those sins. And all this Midat Gava, it does not, it's the, you know, the Midat Gava is, is the beginning of all of the sins. Pride is the beginning of all of the sins. Why? Because it says, King David says, Me'ayin Yavo Ezri. He says, Me'ayin, Me'ayin Yavo Ezri. Yavo Ezri. It says, I'm looking at the mountains and I would like to see from where my help will come. And then God is going to help me. But where does my help come? When I do not have pride. When I become nothing. When I understand that I'm only a tool of Hashem in this world. Because if you look at Ayin, Aleph Yudhu, it's Ani, me. Look, it's the same letters. Aleph Nun Yud is Ani. Me. Me. I'm, I have ego. It's me. You see? I'm here. This is me. But when I turn those letters into Ayin, when I understand I have, I'm humble, I'm modest, and I understand that I do not deserve anything in this world. I came back in order to fix the sins that I already made. So I do not deserve anything. And everything that God gives me is only charity that He gives me. Because he, is uh, 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 he has a lot of kindness. Chesed. You understand? He's the one that, uh, that gives us all this kindness. It's not because we deserve. Because when we came to this world, we came to fix. Which means we are in a minus point. You understand? Either we'll do the fixing or God forbid we can cause ourselves more sins. It depends on our choices in life. But when I understand it, when I'm humble, then I become a tube of prosperity for God. Then He shows me, He communicates with me by my thoughts. He brings people to open my spiritual eyes, not my physical eyes, which I judge people with, but my spiritual eyes. He opens my eyes. He opens the path for me because He says, wow, this is a humble person. This is a place that I'm going to, the Shekhinah should be there. You understand? Because God is with us all the time. Now we are sitting over here. God is with you too, with each and every one of us. So it's shameful if we cause Him to get angry with us by, by choosing the, the, the wrong thing, God forbid. So when we choose the right thing, we do nachat to Hashem. Which means when we wake up here, we wake up also the worlds in heaven. It depends on us. Because God created this world for the children of Israel, that they will study the Torah. And the Torah is the essence of this world. If God would forbid we did not study the Torah, the whole world and all of the, and all of the worlds that were created around this world are going to vanish, are going to go back to Torah of all. It depends on us, dear women. And in this note, I would like to tell you, Bezrat Hashem, שיגיע משיח תקן במרה בימינו אבי, שיגיע במסר אליהו נביא לעולם יפרד אדם מחברו בדבר הלכה, יחיד ברבים הלכה כרבים.